Hello. Thanks for joining me. So today we're going to be just doing a super quick video on the pattern comp. Right now I'm recording this for Touch Design and Digital Dev at the new school, but I hope uh, it helps you, whoever you are. So let's get into it. So, you know, we're mostly familiar with the LFO. And I think that's the thing about touch designers, you know, we get we get stuck in our ways. It's kind of like life. You know? we, we get used to doing things in one way. We don't realize that, you know, there's a lot of ways to do one thing. And an old boss of mine once said, you know, you can do anything with anything. And, you know, old trusty LFO really does get the job done. But since you all have this project coming up, I wanted to show you another node that would be really helpful for you, which is called the pattern. Now, what's different about the pattern is basically all the extra options you have over here. So if we look at LFO, you know, we're sort of limited to the phase amplitude, and then we have these types. You go over here to pattern, and it's like we're getting a new Tesla. You know, we have we have everything we could ever want here. You know, a lot of, in fact, so much that it's really hard to know what's going on. So, what I do is I don't necessarily memorize all the different types of parameters of everything going on. I am going to hop over to my favorite place in Touch Designer, which is the operator snippets, and take a look around. And the operator snippets, if you're familiar, is basically just your documentation. It shows you what, what is possible, what, what you could ever dream of. So take some time and, and look around because you know there's a lot of, there's a lot to learn here. And basically for almost every node, not everyone, but almost everyone will give you detailed tutorials on info on, on all this stuff. So what I want to do is come over here to pattern, and this is the first thing I want to check out, you know, is range. So what this gives us is some different staircase values. That's cool. So as we go into sign wave, we're going up and up and up and down. And this is nice. We have a little taper. So it's going to kind of go up and down, up and down, up and down. And decay curve, this is good. And here we have some, there's another, another type of staircase where it's only going up. You know, enough, enough with me talking. Let's just see what we can do with these sorts of things. So. I'm just going to start out with this pattern. And so I'm going to get rid of you and you and just leave this. So we're looking at this data, and it's hard for us to sort of know what is going on in here. What I like to do is put this, put my chops that are in this format into a time slice. And this will let us see what the values are. Cool. So we can see. What we would expect is starting at one and then slowly coming down to zero. And I'm going to throw this into a null. And then I'm going to start making an animation. So I know I want a little rectangle. Excellent. And I'm going to put that into a transform. Perfect. And what I want to do is make this a little bit smaller. And I want to sort of let this curve sort of define how the square is sort of falling down. So what I'm going to do is take this null and attach it to the Y translate. And that's nice, but it's going, it's going too far. So what I like to do at this point is I know I'm going to need to put a mask right over here. So I'll put one in over here. And I know that my values are coming from between one and zero. So you can see it in that graph. So it's already set zero and one. So what I can do is turn this back to gray so it's manual and see what is the maximum, what is the minimum I need. So I can go all the way up. And I know that the maximum I want is going to be 0.4. So I'll set this over here to 0.4. 
And then I want it to just land gently in the center. So I'll move that, see what looks in the center. I mean, I can assume that's gonna be zero. Let's give it a negative one, see what that looks like. Negative 0 0.1, and then see what happens. When we attach this, that's already. So it's a little slow. So what I can do is use this tapered decay rate. So you, you see how many cycles it's going through. So it's going one through thousand. So I'm gonna take this length down dramatically. And then you can see it's gonna come down. Awesome. So that's perfect. So that's, that's our first use of a little taper. So, you know, I could have just moved it. What's nice about this is it allows you to make it, make sort of a change in values and then let it stay there for, for a little bit. Okay, so let's try something else. So here is another one I want to use now, which is basically the little staircase, um, which is this pattern. So here is this. Um, briefly cover this in class, but basically the way you get this is just taking a normal sine wave and then just adding the integer to it. No, four. No, no, no. We don't, we don't see it. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, again, I'm gonna put this into a time slice so, so I can see the values coming through. And I'm gonna put this into a mass and a noise. Not noise, no. Beautiful. Okay, so I will put this from zero to 10. So, so that's the values I have coming in. And then I want to basically affect the rotation of this. Sorry, the fire truck. That's, that's, that's what you're gonna get, you know? And then you can do. So I'm gonna change this to 360 and 360 and cool we can see that's sort of going up and down now i'll grab this channel and attach it to this rotate and we can see that it's sort of following this sort of stepwise function and i just like how smooth that can be and that's just another way that you can animate your parameters sort of like going up and down. And that's used, I find a lot of uses for, for this specific, probably this function is the one that I will end up using the most. And just one final thing that I think is really useful is what's called a taper. So we're basically go, like going closer to the, mid, the midpoint of this, um, of this square wave, but we're sort of going up and down and up and down as we get there. So, we can take this and put you up here. And I'll put this into time slice, into a math, into a null. Very nice. So, okay, so it's zero, it's negative one and one. Now what I want to do here is, so for all the other examples, I've been just taking it out of the pattern without necessarily doing, it, doing anything. So if I want to control the speed a little bit more, I am basically adding it just phase at a certain, a certain speed. So let's just before we get there, let me connect this up. So like I said before, I want to sort of define my values I want to go between. So I want to use scale now. So I want to scale it out a little bit and let me put the tile on so I can get the effect that I want. So, okay, so I think this is the minimum I want, 0 0.2. So we're nice and zoomed out. Um, I want to do this. Okay, and we have that minimum and the maximum I would want would be, 
probably at one point. Let's say two. Nice. And so I'll hook this up to the scale and let's see what we get. That's nice. Though, you know, I'm not getting that zoomed out quite as much as I want. You know, like I thought I would end up going to spend a little bit more time in zooming that one out. So what I'm gonna do is change this to a little bit lower. And I'm going to give it a background color. And now we're we're animating now. You know, we have now we have a few different ways of um, animating the square. Um, I know it's not the sexiest thing, but you know, just knowing that this pattern exists is gonna let you do a lot of different things. Um, I think it's really quick. You just make it a little bit more exciting than this. Earlier, so I have a little bit of this video. And what I want to do is kind of do some stuff with the scale of it. And so, so I'm not going to narrate quite as much because you have the other examples to see, but you can kind of see what I'm doing or I'm going to scale this. I want to sort of scale it out. That's nice. Um, okay, cool. So I want to get it to there. So I'm going to grab this and copy it over here. And I want, so I've 0 0.2 as a minimum. And I want as the maximum 0 0.8. So I'm going to grab this, the scale, and now we have a nice effect. And you can see because of the specific, um, because of the specific wave we're using, we're not we're not so linear with the LFO. We're not necessarily following the square wave, and you know we can grab. And grab these other ones and sort of, you know, do all sorts of things. You know, let me uh, throw this into a displace and now I'm sort of just freestyling. So I have a feeling it'll look good. And you now let's. Uh, Let's get them the no here. what I'm going to do is put this into a limit and yeah, there we go. That's looking interesting. And I think what I want to find a nice one of these parameters to animate. Yeah, so this exponent will be good. And so what I'm going to do is grab this pattern from over here. Bring this down here. And we can see, again, pause. So what's the max, the minimum exponent here? I think uh, something like 0 0.65 is a nice minimum, and then a nice maximum would be four. Looks pretty good. So I'm going to put this up to four. 
Wow, that's really crazy. A little, so what I wanna do, I wanna definitely like lengthen this out a little bit. And uh, that's looking pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, cool. Throw that in here. Nice, cool. See, the pattern can get you a lot of really interesting effects. And this is just the beginning. So definitely just play around. I mean, that's the key to everything in Touch Designer. Um, look at the operator snip snippets. If you're a real nerd, go look at the documentation um, and just see what, what feels good to you. Thanks so much.